Let's go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our international uh, our book club. It's quite an auspicious day today because uh, in our household, the bees have swarmed and I'm with you and not doing my assistant beekeeping work. But hey, this is important. We're uh, reviewing together today. As you all know, we are Bellingcat, uh, the intelligence agency for the people by the very prolific and active uh, Elliot uh, uh, Higgins. Now, you may have seen my book review already, and I'm not going to repeat all of that, but it is a book based very much on this notion that evidence exists and falsehoods exist, and people like us, I guess, and those on the call care about the difference between the two. It's a book that dives deeply into the Novichok uh, Salisbury uh, Scripple affair uh, into the Syrian dictator Bashar uh, al Assad, the downing of flight MH17. And despite those being really serious and pretty terrible topics, this sense of open source journalism uh, and intelligence that we can all participate in is a very, very strong theme. And today we're going to explore the book and the themes with an extraordinarily diverse uh, uh, panel looking at some of the critical elements of the book. It has many, uh, but we've kept our panel, uh, uh, you know, compact and I think powerful. And we'll be looking at three of the major sort of elements, the red threads woven into the book. The first, kind of media, comms, social, uh, marketing. The second, digital and tech, uh, and innovation uh, and open source. And then thirdly, uh, the impact on people. To take us, uh, give us the aperture on the media, digital, comms, marketing, etc. We have Luann Wise, a founder, businesswoman, mm -hmm. uh, marketing, social media, and communications, Zarina, or Zar, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Um, in terms of the tech, open source, innovation, and digital, we have the mighty Paul Russell, a senior executive at IBM. And then for the impact on people, uh, both involved in and maybe participating in Bellingcat's new digital courses and capabilities, uh, the wonderful Herman Stewart, uh, who this week, we're lucky to have him because he's taken his amazing mentoring platform and taken it digital for the benefit of so many who have so little uh, uh, privilege. So welcome to you all. Uh, thank you for joining me. It's going to be, I think, very, very interesting. I'd like to start, if I may, um, and we'll be taking, of course, your questions. So anything, any questions you have, pop them in the chat. We'll be picking them up and responding uh, to them. But I'd like to get a sense of what each of you thought of the book uh, through your lenses or any other lens, perhaps starting uh, with Luann. So tell us what you thought, Luann, and, um, you know, what you think is important here. Yeah, thank you, Harriet. Um, I think the wonderful thing about a book club and reading alongside other people is that sometimes it pushes you out of your own zone and the, and the books that you might read. And also knowing that you're going to be discussing the book with other people has something different going on in your mind while you're you're kind of working your way through it. But I loved this book. It probably isn't one that I personally would have picked off the shelf or or looked at myself. But I loved it for many different reasons. And I have been recommending it to people since. Mm. I think the important factor of the book club and the criteria that we've put in that books have to be current, um, you know, published quite recently, really helped with this one because it talks about news events that we're aware of, that we've seen people talking about, that we may have even seen documentaries on. So it kind of 
it really made it real in terms of how he talks about using social media, other media channels, his journalism outlook on solving um, Salisbury poisonings and what's going on in Russia and spotting planes. And But for me, it's the attention to detail and the time mm. that they have to focus mm. their attention from looking at Google Earth maps and cross-referencing which window was a picture taken from, where was the sun at that point of time, so what time of day. So I loved it, but I'm in absolute awe of how much diligence and focus and attention they had to the details to dive in and, and find the answers. And I know we'll talk some more about the framework that they do that within as well. Great. Great. So, Paul, from your, you know, did what did you think of the book? And as a technologist, you know, working for a company that kind of moved to open source, uh, this is a form of open source journalism. But what did you make of it all? Yeah, thank you, Harriet. And um, thank you for the mighty uh, label as well. I, I'll, I will treasure that. Um, so thank you for that. Um, firstly, it was a book I probably would have read if, um, and thank you for um, putting it towards me because it, it intrigues me as a technologist and the role of, as you say, open source. Um, but it did challenge me on two fronts. Um, and I, firstly, I really did enjoy the book and I have told lots of people like you, Luan, about it. Um, so that, that's good. But it challenged me on two fronts. Firstly, um, it made me think about my own confirmation bias. Um, mm -hmm. News is so fast right now. You know, this concept of slow journalism, journalism isn't something we really live in right now. So it really challenged me to suddenly think, wow, I probably would have believed, I probably would have believed that. Um, and it's, it annoyed me slightly as well because, you know, I should know better, you know, as a technologist to say, not necessarily trust the data um, because as mm -hmm. you'll know, data is just, is just pieces of information and it's the intelligence and wisdom that we get from that. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing is a, in business, it did intrigue me about the role of intelligence gathering. And I don't mean from a, secret service point of view, but as a business uh, runs on intelligence. And therefore, you know, how do we in the corporate world use technology to be so curious to find out, you know, what is the real source of the information and can we do something with it? And it made me think again, maybe in business, we do suffer from this speed and bias mm -hmm. where we just trust it and uh, decisions are made good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the thing we just noticed with the post office just recently, um, yes. just proves a bit of the point in terms of that speed, I think. So really intriguing book, really enjoyed it. I've read bits of it twice, and mm -hmm. I've visited <laughs> Elliot on YouTube, um, yeah. and I've found loads of people are doing OSINT, you know, open source intelligence, and it's become a thing. And I, I think it's intriguing where it will go and what we do with it. But no, I really did enjoy the book and recommend it if people are like me, curious about technology. Fantastic. And yeah. Herman, um, what did you make of it? I mean, from a people perspective, you know, you're the ultimate mentor's mentor. Is this is this a book that you think is good uh, for mm. everyday folks to read and get involved in? Mm. I, I feel it, it, it's definitely interesting in a sense of a lot of the things that was within the book. Um, people would have access to via news and and online and social media and so forth. But I do believe it takes a certain proclivity or a certain interest for people to want to deep dive deep into the subject matters. And I mean, for myself, I found it intriguing, especially the human story of Elliot himself in a sense of how he embarked on becoming this person who he is now and where he started, so the fact that he started off as it being an interest, something that he was doing alongside his job, something that he was doing as a blog, but then he was picking up momentum and he was getting much more exposure and more interest. And for me, I was very interested in the, the development of the career because, you know, from my background and mentoring and looking at how people become who they are and how they find their paths. Mm. I felt that it was quite intriguing, the fact that he dropped out of university. He has an interest in media and he went a different route. And he also um, was interested in a way that it debunked probably the myth of how you excel in that career where he wasn't necessarily um, accepted in certain cycles or certain circles. Um, but then he was definitely still 
he was ahead of the cur he was ahead of the curve. And then he really, because of his insight, was accepted into these different circles. So I feel it's it was very interesting, very intriguing, at times gory, um, and, and, and impactful to tell the truth, um, because I feel um, the human element of it and just the vulnerability of people and how people in power can really um, impact people's vulnerabilities as well. So, yeah, I feel it was a very interesting book in, in that sense, definitely. Great. And I'm, I'm really interested. I've asked myself this question about why write it? You know, is intelligence uh, a long game? Is it best conducted in the full glare of daily multiple Twitter uh, 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 inputs? Is it a means to expand a business with the kind of digital events and courses so that we can all be investigative journalists? What do you think about the reasons for writing the book. Elliot says very nobly um, a number of different ways and times that it's holding, um, you know, bad actors to account uh, in a way that, um, you know, some of the world security agencies uh, do as well. But, but what do you think? Is this a business? Is this a labor of love? Why write the book? Uh, I'm sure there will be other uh, uh, books. I'm really interested in your view. It's a question I always ask authors when they appear live or when we debate it. Mm. I'll, I'll go first because um, I'm an author as well and so I, I'm kind of looking at it from different lenses and you think th there's, there's many reasons for wanting to write a book or there's a difference between writing a book as we've talked about Paul, writing it and then actually publishing it and releasing it to the world as well. Mm. Part of it is that you've just got so much stuff in your head, so you want to, to share it. I would expect that Elliot Higgins in his work and starting to talk about his work and his work becoming more public, just kept getting asked the same questions again and again and got to the point of probably writing some blogs about it, which turned into a, a massive piece of, you know, share it. You know, it's, it's, it's a big book in terms of just wanting to answer the questions that he was getting asked all of the time. And what I did love about this book and the style of the book is that it is all about questions and answers. So it it planted more questions in your mind. You finished the book and, and mm -hmm. Harriet, when we were first talking about it, I said, but why did he write it? And why did he not include this? And and why did, you know, why why this? And I think I think there's more to come. It's made us all research it more, what he's doing, following him on, on social media. So there is still lots of questions, but I'm really glad he did write it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are multiple reasons that he did so um, to fill in gaps. But I think he very much wrote it for himself as well as others. And I, yeah, I can care. I mean, I definitely I definitely like your point about his head was probably full. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the best way sometimes is to get it out there. And digital now is whether it's blogs or, you know, Twitter or whatever. So I think he did it for partly that reason. And because he wants to cram in some new information. Um, yeah. I think it's definitely unfinished. Um, and, you know, it might not be a, might not be a book next. But I think he's got a lot of people looking at it, and it was there before as well. I mean, I think he, he hadn't even invent this; it was it was existing for a, mm. a, a long time. So you know, it's very similar to other people. But I do think it's that um, you know, the sharing of his thoughts to create other people to combine their thoughts in a, like a crowdsourcing way, which is what he was doing. And I think we need it more importantly because I noticed Tim Berners Lee recently was talking about reclaiming the internet. Um, and mm -hmm. I kind of think, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe he didn't think that when he started the book, but in a way, he's, he's part of that reclaiming the internet for good. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all four of us want to reclaim the internet in our own way, doing what we do, making mm -hmm. sure that when we use data, it's truthful mm -hmm. and honest and immutable. Um, so whether it's big technology companies or individual people, I think he was just doing it as a citizen and I applaud him for it. But I, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, whether he's doing it for altruistic reasons, you know, who knows? But I, I applaud him for doing it. Mm. Alvin, uh, what do you think? Do you think he's safe? I, I, I think, um, wow. I think that it, it must have taken a lot of courage for him to write the book um, because there's a lot of personal vulnerability in a sense mm -hmm. of 
the establishments that he was exposing, the things that he was sharing, um, and the facts, not only of what he shared from, you know, retrospects, but the facts of potentially what he could share in the future, mm -hmm. you know, and I think the fact that he's become so um, open and sh and sharing it, I, I feel that there is, yeah, there's, def there's definitely danger because he's coming up against, you know, he's sharing about countries, he's sharing about regimes, but at the same time, it, it sounds like there's a great passion there and, and really when you've got passion and you've got purpose, and you really believe in your cause, mm -hmm. there's something inside that's more powerful than the external um, factors that you've got to deal with. So the fact that yeah. there's a passion or there's a, there's a purpose to share this information, and, and what I would say as well, it would be great if um, what, he, what he does, he does with a gener generosity of heart, but I believe it would be great if it was more made more accessible to the more layman person or young wow. people that they could make applications of it in their everyday usage of social media. Because I feel even though it's out there and everyone can use it or everyone can access the book, I believe it, it, its inclination is towards a certain type of person. Just like he said, that it's more people that would be into IT or people that were analytical or so forth. But if you could make this in like a for dummies where <laughs> people on their everyday social media usage and, and what they're exposing without realizing it, it could probably be much more useful in, in that sense. Yeah, and I, I think that, um, not that I need to defend Elliot, but um, he has made very available the mm -hmm. skills. Uh, Luann yeah. was, you yeah. know, sharing earlier uh, on the website, you know, how to really maximize the use of, of tools. Mm -hmm. And of course, he has his digital training, which is 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 not uh, entirely accessible yeah. as it, it's certainly not mm -hmm. cheap. So he's certainly embracing the open source. I, I think it's an interesting point, though, uh, uh, Herman, as we think about skill translation, young people mm, who, um, yeah. you know, are by nature curious, who, you know, are, are um, you know, notice, observing, watching, learning about certain tools. It'd be great to think that um, uh, Elliot Higgins and the Bellingcat crowd could make this uh, uh, even more accessible to our mm -hmm. less than privileged youth. I think that's a, a sensational uh, point. What do others think? I, I definitely think so. I mean, I, I yeah, completely concur. And um, Herman, you, you're spot on with what you said, um, and, and as are you, Harriet. And I think the, the young people is interesting. I'm no longer a young person. So, you know, and um, I think there are a lot of young people who probably look at this and go, yeah, well, I wouldn't believe it anyway, because, mm. You know, I, I, I have different views of trusting information and maybe it's a certain age group that's very mis mistrusting because we've we've been brought in on conspiracy and things like that. So we go looking for it and maybe there's a group of young people who say, look, you know, we're fine. We won't trust what we see. We always make sure we do some fact checking. Um, and that, but equally, there's a group of young people that are very vulnerable as well. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's, a, it's a real balance and I think he's doing the right thing in terms of media literacy and education and mm. actually saying look you know if you're a teacher or you know I'm a head teacher of a school you know what mm. could I do this type of thing for children um you know if I'm a, you know all sorts of people in public um society yeah. and also corporates as well I mean you know Harriet you, you know as well as I do that the, the whole security around corporate data and how we get trained to look for you know malware and phishing emails and things like this which is mm -hmm. one thing. And then there's another thing as well about how do we use our information for our, our own purposes as businesses in, in a wise and sensible way. So I think everybody is up for education as a, as a result of Bellingham. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what he's doing. I don't think there's anyone exception, the government specifically, I would think. You mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think I, I come across a lot this in the, in the work that I do with this almost the digital native and the digital immigrant split those of us that mm -hmm. grew up with it and those of us that didn't and you know there is different uses to it there is different attitudes to it and I think the younger people the natives that have grown up with this technology I think the challenge for them is that they're very comfortable with it they're not fearful of of social media and the internet as as we mm -hmm. may be and and some people are 
apprehensive of of the tech and what it can do they don't have that fear but what my experience is that they don't have necessarily the ability to check or to consider that things yeah. may not be correct or credible yeah. and to ask the right yeah. questions so we know from I read lots about what the social media platforms are doing they are constantly battling misinformation and disinformation I think it's for all of us of all generations to have that filter and factor on them to kind of question yeah. question everything yeah. and who's written this where has it come from has it been supported and the thing I loved about the Bellingcat motto is that it is identify, verify, amplify, and that they cross-reference everything. They don't just find mm -hmm. one thing and go, oh, tick, you know, move on to the next piece of information. Mm -hmm. They check and they double check and they cross-reference as much as they possibly can. And I think that's, for me, the power that comes out of this book in terms of I want to be able to do that, but I know that it's a massive task you know, I now know something from this book, but I now know that there's a lot, lot more I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere near what the Belling Cat guys are doing. Mm. So, Herman, do you think that you will be joining up as part of Elliot's army, uh, 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 entering the open source investigative journalist race? Is that something that appeals to you? Will you be recommending it with your enormous reach now with the digital mentors? Uh, in terms of a potential profession? It's, I mean, what I would say um, is it does, it, it's a book that's got great interest. It's a book that is necessary. I would say that the skill set behind the research can be applied mm -hmm. in life, applied in how you find the next job, how you find certain situations, how you find your, your next home. So I feel like the, the undergirding skill set of research and being able to be analytical um, and being perceptive, I feel that those are skill sets that are transferable across a number of different industries or different settings. And I feel that to tell the truth, um, that they are, um, it's a disposition that we all need to um, develop and improve, and especially as we are more. Um, gravitating towards using social media and not everything that we see is true. And that's why when I was saying even around the positioning for it being accessible for young people, I believe that it mm. definitely is accessible in a sense of everyone's got Google, that's got technology or everyone's got the ability to listen to the free aspects around it that give people the, in a sense, the how to's to do it. But I feel a lot of times when we're working with different demographics, we always have to use different language. We have to always yeah. use different ways of framing our information. And I think even the application for many people wouldn't be attractive in a sense of the application of it being around war crimes. You know, if it was an application being used around police brutality or applications used around um, coronavirus, th that's more relevant or pertinent to people right now, it probably would draw people in now because they're more interested in it but people that, that are probably more interested in espionage or interested in political yeah. um, advancement that they're probably what will be drawn towards Bellingcat themselves. Yeah. But you make a great point there Herman because today of course Elliot is very active on social media today the he is um, focusing on the disparity between the Indian government's um, statements around the COVID cases and the mm. published figures and what he frames as the social media reality as literally mm. millions of people share a, a very, very different story. So I think your yeah. point is a very profound one around applying these techniques with a confidence and with a learning to your own sense of or your own uh, view of what the biggest injustices uh, are. Mm. And I think if you follow uh, uh, Elliot and the Bell and Cat crowd, I think there are wider avenues that they explore, yes. have written on and, and do this together. So I think mm -hmm. a very, very different book than uh, Deep Pursuits of uh, Understanding Unconscious Bias Better. Uh, I want to, first of all, thank this amazing uh, 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 panel. 
thank you, Paul and Luann and Herman, your rock stars. And right. so happy you. that you agreed to do this and how wonderful to see a proper panel of, you know, diversity and, and deep inclusion that warms the cockles of my heart instead of a wide array of just white guys. No disrespect to you at all, Paul. Uh, uh, but um, I, I, I also want to remind you, uh, if you want to see the review uh, and all of the comments that people are making, please visit our website, the questions that you sent me, I've asked. Uh, and um, we'll be taking your inputs, giving people a little more time to read books that you're not all sad little bookworms who curl up for hours on end and read books until the sun goes down. But we will be revealing our next book, very different again, on the 6th of May. HarrietGreen.com's got all of the information. And uh, tremendous, it's been fabulous to discuss mm. this with you. Thank you to all the people who joined the LinkedIn Live and look forward to talking with you again. Bye-bye.